Coming in at number 5 we have Devil's Tramping Ground North Carolina. The Devil's Tramping Ground is a camping spot located in a forest near the Harpers Crossroads area in Bear Creek, North Carolina. Throughout history it has been the subject to persistent local legends and lore, which frequently allege that the devil tramps and haunts a barren circle of ground in which nothing is said to grow. It has also been listed frequently on lists of unusual place names, as you would expect. In North Carolina tales about the ring, also known as the circle of ground, are well known. These include the disappearance of objects left within the ring overnight, dogs howling and strange events occurring to those who are brave enough to spend the night within its boundaries. It has been alleged as I previously mentioned that nothing has grown within the ring for a hundred years. Legend says that this is the very place that the devil himself can rise from the depths of fiery hell and thus come to earth. Sounds great to me. It is also said that at this place the devil is supposed to walk in circles on certain night to bring his evil into this world. Journalist John William Harden wrote about the area stating, Chatham natives say that the devil goes there to walk in circles as he thinks up new means of causing trouble for humanity. There, sometimes during the dark of night, the majesty of the underworld of evil silently tramps around that bare circle, thinking, plotting and planning against good in behalf of wrong. In at number 4 we have Witchwood Forest, England. Witchwood Forest is a biological site of special scientific interest north of Whitney in Oxfordshire. Now unlike the rest of our list, there is no historic event that took place that confirms the forest is in fact haunted. However it is said by those who step foot in the area that there is hair raising stuff going on amongst the trees. Some people have reported seeing the apparitions of crying children in a horse drawn carriage to even ghostly hands touching them. A more notable story is that of the ghost of Amy Robsar, the wife of the Earl of Leicester. Amy mysteriously died of a broken neck and one day while hunting in the Witchwood Forest, her husband was said to have stumbled across her ghost. According to the legend, her ghost told him that he would be dead in 10 days and that he was. The legend has lived on and it is said that if you dwell in the Witchwood Forest you will meet the same grisly end as Amy's husband. Coming in at number 3, the Black Forest, Germany. The Black Forest is a large forested mountain range in the state of Baden-Württemberg in southwest Germany. Historically the area was known for ore deposits which led to mining featuring heavily in the local economy. However in more recent years tourism has become the primary industry, accounting for around 140 thousand jobs. Now the forest itself got its name from the conifers that block out most light below, giving the area a mysterious aura. The forest is nestled deep within the southwestern Germany, with the area's tall evergreens being as sinister as they are beautiful. It is also said to be home to paranormal creatures, ranging from witches to even werewolves. This in turn inspired the brothers Grimm to write their famous stories, Hansel and Gretel, Rapunzel and Sleeping Beauty. Some of the many legends that surround the forest go goes as follows. A headless huntsman riding on a white steed, a king who kidnaps women to take them to his underwater lair, and of course friendly dwarves and frightening werewolves. It makes sense now why this would be the location of many of the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales. Coming in at number 2, Hoya Baku Forest, Romania. The Hoya Forest is situated to the west of the city of Cluj-Napoca, near the open air section of the Ethnographic Museum of Transylvania. It is a beautiful place that often lures in bikers and hikers from around the world. However, according to legend, the forest is the location of paranormal activity. According to one visitor, I quote, We are in the clearing. The trees stop in a uniform oval where nothing grows and where, since official records began, nothing has grown. Once when I came here, says Alex our guide, I found 60 people from Bucharest trying to open a gate into another dimension. Now the clearing is supposedly the creepiest place in the entire forest and is said to defy the investigations of soil scientists and attracts Roman witches as well as people trying to clean the forest of its evil. Now the forest first came to international attention in 1968 when a military technician by the name of Emil Barnier photographed what he believed was a UFO hovering over the clearing. Now, at the time, the communist government equated the belief in the paranormal as madness, as well as state sabotage, so in turn, Barnier lost his job. As of today, many people who visit the forest, and specifically the clearing, report strange symptoms, including nausea, anxiety, as well as the feeling of being watched. 
Not to mention, as I said before, nothing seems to grow in the clearing according to official records. Weirder still, trees in the surrounding area grow in odd patterns, zigzags and spirals that no one has been able to explain. Very creepy indeed. And finally, coming in at number 1, Uikihara Forest, Japan. Also known as the Sea of Trees or more commonly the Suicide Forest, this is a forest on the northwestern flank of Japan's Mount Fuji, existing on the hardened lava laid down by the last major eruption of Mount Fuji in 864 CE. The forest has a reputation as the home to ghosts of the dead in Japanese mythology. In more recent years though, it has become known as the Suicide Forest, with it being one of the world's most used suicide sites. In 2003, 105 bodies were discovered in the forest, exceeding the previous record of around 78 back in 2002. Jumping forward to 2010, the police recorded more than 200 people having attempted suicide in the forest, of whom 54 were successful, which is absolutely devastating. Now, Some people blame this horrific trend on the forest's associated Association with demons in Japanese mythology. However, others credit it to the tightly packed trees, which make it easy to get lost in the forest and muffle sounds, in turn providing an isolated location. As you would expect, many spiritualists have visited the forest, who have called the site a hotbed of paranormal activity. These people believe that the suicides in the forest have permeated the forest's trees, which in turn has generated paranormal activity in the area, preventing anyone who may enter from leaving the depths of the forest. Many hikers who decide to make their way through the dense forest will often mark their path with tape or string to make it easier to find their way out again. And those who visit say the forest is deeply unsettling, with the sprinkling of clothing and litter lying around. Number 5 in this list is the pit. So this one is less scary and more just gross if I'm being honest with you. Frivolous on Reddit says, When I was in the scouts, or rather the local equivalent, legally adult scouts had to do the three feather challenge. One day without food, one day without speaking, and one day and night alone in the woods with only a knife and a tarp unseen by any human, after which one has to sneak back to the scout camp unnoticed by the sentries and report to the camp master. It was my third day, so I took off, walked for miles through the woods, and found the most remote spot in the wildest, most overgrown part of the woods. Spent a spooky but uneventful night until almost before dawn when I decided to go for a morning swim in the lake right before taking off to go back. I stripped nude and went towards the lake, but noticed a group of guys fishing, so decided to go back. Suddenly, the ground underneath my feet caved in, and I found myself submerged up to my armpits in the absolute vilest mass I have ever smelled. It was a pit where poachers dumped the guts and leftovers of illegally hunted deer, and it fermented for weeks. Imagine the scene. A group of anglers hear some ungodly screaming from the direction of the woods, and run there to see if someone needs help. What they see is a teenager-shaped ghoul covered completely in blood and rotten over who's crawling out of a bloody hole in the ground while shrieking and weeping, then runs at them. I can't imagine how gross it would have been to fall into a pit of dead rotting animal guts as you're completely naked. Like that alone would have scarred me for life. And then on the other side of things, to be the anglers and see this golem like creature covered in guts running at you. I would have thought that whatever this thing is just took down a massive animal or something and that I'm about to be next on the menu. One would also think that if you're about to do some illegal poaching that maybe hiding it in a spot where people don't walk would be a good idea. Like I obviously don't know anything about that world of things at all, but this whole scenario just seems pretty dumb to me guys. Either way, at least my dude made it out okay, although he had to be covered in guts first. Number 4 on this list is the swinging bag. This story is one that defies all of our understanding of physics. Ranker writes, My scout troop was on a 10 day backpacking trek at Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico. We were hiking in the southern region and must have been on night 4 or 5. We got to the campsite after a surprise thunderstorm that dumped some hail on us. We set up camp and built a fire to dry out our clothes. While sitting around the campfire, someone noticed that a tent stake bag was hanging on a nearby branch of a tree about 5 feet off the ground. It was swinging back and forth, hard enough that the branch was moving, though no wind was blowing. We stopped it from swinging and watched to see if it would start up again, and it did. It took a few minutes to get going again, but it was swinging on its own in the same direction. We all went to sleep for the night, only to find it in the morning still swinging. We have no idea what would have caused this. Yeah, and what would have caused that. I think our guys would have noticed if the wind was really acting up or if it had anything to do with that. 
This sounds like something paranormal for sure. I'm honestly pretty surprised that these guys were left alone that night. Something like this is a telltale warning sign. A ghost or a demon basically telling you to get the hell out of there. The fact that they managed to live through that night and just had the bag sway was really weird. Either way, still a pretty chilling tale. Number three on this list is The Voice. This is a story of a forest ranger who was on a personal trip and it's just all kinds of creepy. Ranker says, I was on a big camping trip with my friends at Suwannee River Music Park in Florida. My sister and I decided to go off and explore some trails around 11 p.m. There was a trail connected to the one we were on, but there was yellow tape strung up between the two trees at the entrance. We decided to go in anyway. About 15 steps into the trail, we both hear clear as day, unmistakably, our mother's voice say, Honey, why is your nose bleeding? Our mother was not on this trip with us. We turn around to see nothing, being kind of spooked, we both started to head back to the main trail. A few minutes later, my sister had a nosebleed that lasted like 20 seconds. Now this one is just plain weird, guys. Who was that voice? Where was it coming from? Why did it sound like their mother and how on earth did it know what was going to happen? So many questions and so little answers with a story like this. Maybe there was something special about this trail and that's why it was taped off. Did someone die here and the ghost was the one imitating their mother's voice? That still doesn't explain how that ghost would know how their mother sounds and also what's gonna happen in the future. It seems like they stumbled upon an area of the forest where conventional laws of the world don't apply. Number two on this list is the invisible man. I guess invisible might not be the best word to describe this guy because you could see him, he just wasn't actually there. Ranker says, I worked at a summer camp where the cabins were arranged in a circle with a center building that was used for showers and bathrooms. One night, one of my campers, about 12 years old, asks to go to the bathroom just as we had all gone to bed. I tell him to take his bunkmate and go quickly. The bathroom building is about 100 feet away. The kids are kind of dorking around like kids do and they take off the bathroom running. All of a sudden, I hear screams that still haunt me. Hysterical, choking for air, horror movie screams. I jump up and run out and and I see the two boys sitting on the ground right outside the bathrooms and they're kind of holding each other. After a few minutes, they calm down enough and say that they ran through a man. They say he appeared right before they got to the bathroom door and was standing in the doorway. They didn't have enough space to stop and they put their hands up to go through him and into the door. They said there was cold air around him and that was it, he was gone. They said he had a suit on and black slick back hair and was smiling. Literally two kids ran through a dude. This is the type of core memory that I do not want to have. The kids left the camp the next day and apparently were never the same after that. Clearly this man must have been a ghost that died here, but from what and who he was, we may never know. And finally, number one on this list is a jungle spirit. Yeah, you heard that right, guys. A literal spirit from the jungle. The story goes, I was working at a survey station deep in the Malaysian jungle in Borneo. I was sleeping in one of the dorms with some of the rangers we were working with, five people in the total dorm. That night, I was having a nightmare and woke up at about 2 a.m. to the sound of footsteps outside. Whatever it was was fairly big and sounded bipedal. It stopped right outside the window, so I'm staring back at the window trying hard to see. Suddenly, one of the rangers shifted in her bed making a noise and I could hear whatever it was running away quite fast. Being a rather skeptical person in general, I woke up and asked the rangers the next day about it. They adamantly believed that it was a jungle spirit coming to check us out. The station stood on stilts so the window sits about 10 feet off the ground. I asked about the possibility of it being a wild animal but they said that the only things big enough to make that loud of a footprint would have been sun bear or a cloud leopard. They said it's generally unheard of for those animals to make it that close to the survey station since there are usually people milling about. The rangers have heard the footsteps before and they firmly believe that a jungle spirit was roaming about the site. I'm getting serious predator vibes from this story, guys. Honestly, if I had this experience, then I am out of there. I don't need to be stalked and eaten by some ancient Malaysian jungle spirit. No thank you. Knowing that you can get attacked by real life animals is bad enough, let alone spirit ones. Number four, Highgate Cemetery. If you stroll through Highgate Cemetery, there's a good chance you'll run into someone famous. The beloved novelist Douglas Adams, the beloved novelist Karl Marx, who's also an author of sorts, or perhaps you'll run into the Highgate Vampire, or one of the witches and spirits that are said to live within the 
this hallowed plot. Highgate Cemetery was raised in the early 1800s, when the city's population was topping the 1 million mark and not slowing down anytime soon, even with a rising number of dead. A lot of dead. Undertakers would cram graves between shops and taverns, shallow graves hastily covered with lime. It got so bad that undertakers would dress as clergymen so that they could carry out dead in secret illegal ceremonies. Imagine being part of an illegal street burial. And that's happening as late as the 1830s. That is insane. With the stench and disease filling up the streets, Parliament had to move to put all the dead somewhere because just in between the Tesco wasn't really doing it for anybody. And in the 1830s, they passed an expansion project to add seven cemeteries into the city of London, with Highgate being exalted as the most luxurious one. Anybody who's anybody wanted to be decomposing in Highgate. Highgate found a surge of new excitement and energy in the 70s when it became a popular site for horror movie film sets. I mean, look at the place, it looks very scary. It eventually meant that the place got an unexpected boost from paranormal hunters who wanted to come check out what was going on there, and legends of the Highgate vampire became common through the 70s. He was said to be a Romanian nobleman from the Middle Ages, and his coffin was brought to England from Europe in the 18th century, and his followers bought him a house in the West End. I don't know about a wealthy Romanian nobleman having followers that buy houses for a dead man. That does seem a bit suspicious. Allegedly now, his followers performed a ritual to bring him back, and now if you believe those legends, he can be seen as a tall, dark figure that glides through the cemetery. Is he out there? You'd have to book a ticket to Highgate, because I'm not looking to find out anytime soon. Unless Top 5 Scary wants to pay for my trip and then we can talk. We'll talk about that after we're finished filming, okay? Number three, Pine Barrens, New Jersey. Our next entry is the famous Pine Barrens of New Jersey. The lush, verdant fields span over a million acres and seven counties in New Jersey, and if you believe the legends, are said to be the home of New Jersey's most infamous resident. No, not Snooky. I'm talking about the Jersey Devil, America's favorite winged monstrosity. Well, after Mothman, maybe. You let me know down below in the comments. Jersey Devil, Mothman, whose side you got? Way back when, when, when the country was still blossoming and clinking glasses celebrating that whole revolution business, the Barrens were a place of burgeoning industry. Host to sawmills, paper mills, and other lesser non-mill based industries that don't bear mentioning. Eventually people ran from the mills and to the hills when coal was said to be found in Pennsylvania, leaving the Barrens, well, a little bit barren. As most residents went off to try and get a lump of coal in their stocking, the Barrens were left behind, leaving ghost towns, but more importantly ghost stories and legends of the Jersey Devil. If you're a Top 5 Scary fan, you've definitely heard a thing or two about the Jersey Devil, but between you and me, you could always stand to hear a little more. There are several legends and fables about this wretched creature, but one of the more consistently retold stories is that there was an old crone who had given birth 12 times, and that wasn't enough apparently because on her 13th birth, the devil cursed her and the Jersey Devil was born. A foul beast with a goat's head, leathery wings, and hooves. It flew up the chimney into the barrens and became a figure of legend, being spotted hundreds of times in the 19th century, with some papers even offering a bounty for the creature's head. Now as far as I know, that bounty is still up if anyone's looking to collect and looking for an easy way to pay rent. You just gotta ship up to the barrens and bag the devil. Done and done. 20 minutes work. In and out. Number two, Manchac Swamp. Okay, this one might be a slight cheat. I hear you guys raising your pitchforks and your torches saying, that's a swamp, that's not a forest. But what is a swamp if not a particularly marshy forest? So they're all boreal ecosystems, okay? We are splitting hairs here. The point is that this one's haunted and there's trees around it. So I think that's enough to qualify it for a position on this list of cursed brush. New Orleans is filled to bursting with two things. The most wondrous advancements in soul food and gumbo on the planet and ghost stories. There's a whole lot of voodoo to go around in Louisiana. And in Manchac, they say there's the ghost of an old voodoo priestess named Julie White. The story of Julie White is an unnerving one. She was said to be a bit of a recluse and would sit on the porch of her swamp shack and spend the day cackling away. I gotta be honest, that sounds like the the, the life. That sounds like the perfect life. Just sitting on a swamp listening to the crawdads sing, cackling and cursing nearby towns. Allegedly, she would predict the demise of nearby towns and their residents. She would sing twisted songs about her death, their death, the end of days, basically everybody dying. Despite the fact that she was a kooky old lady singing songs about the apocalypse on her front steps, locals actually trusted her quite a bit as an oracle and a prophet, and were fearful of wronging her just in case she placed a hex on them. Now the prediction she's most well known for, besides one 
really bizarre oddball correct prediction about the outcome of the 1994 Super Bowl Cowboys at Bills game was her threatening prediction in 1915, where Julie White would cackle over and over that she was going to die and take everyone with her. She chanted this again and again for days until eventually passing away in her chair. On her funeral, a hurricane hit the town, decimating three villages and taking countless lives. Julie is said to be buried somewhere in the swamp, and locals believe it was her spirit that caused that hurricane. So if you go on through, just uh, be nice, I guess. Pay a little respect to Miss Julie White. Number one, Cameron Park, Texas. Our last entry for today is going to be Cameron Park in picturesque Texas. The park and the forest are just gorgeous, a beautiful little slice of Americana, but you and I both know that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about paranormal hauntings, and you better believe Cameron Park has that, buddy. They couldn't even settle on just one haunted spot in this park, as the place is said to be home to more than a few. We've got Jacob's Ladder, which is a set of stairs that is said to be haunted by the climber's ghost, a malevolent prankster spirit with a bit of a dark sense of humor that tugs at visitors and tries to pull them down the stairs. Terribly rude behavior from a ghost. Now, the most well known site of paranormal activity in Cameron Park, though, is the Witch's Castle, the nickname given to the collapsing ruins that lay in the heart of the park. Now, according to local folklore, the castle are the ruins of a house that once belonged to a woman accused of witchcraft. Okay, I'm actually witch accused, old castle house putting this all together. Yeah, okay, I kind of understand where the name Witch's castle comes from. It's fascinating how the etymology of language works. Sometimes it's obvious. In the late 1800s, people kept going missing around the areas surrounding Cameron Park, leading to locals to suspect that our mystery Jane Doe was involved somehow. And they retaliated the only way people in the 1800s knew how to deal when they suspected a woman of heresy and witchcraft. You know what they did? They reasonably sat down with her, they had an adult conversation, they talked about their suspicions, their expectations. No, 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 no. No, they formed a mob and burned her house down while she was still inside. Of course they did. So is it any surprise then that the locals have shared stories about how the witch's restless spirit haunts the grounds of Cameron Park and is said to appear out to visitors who can hear her cackle during late hours of the night? No, I would say that's not much of a surprise at all. That sounds completely reasonable. Number five on this list is the Michigan Dog Man. The Michigan Dogman is a scary urban legend of a creature from, yeah, you guessed it, Michigan. It is a massive seven foot tall beast that stands on two legs and looks a bit like a canine, however it's got the torso of a man. One thing that's very notable about this fearsome creature is its extremely loud human scream that it lets out before it's coming to strike. The first sighting of it was back in 1887, and since then there's been many more sightings all in different regions of Michigan. What's interesting about this creature though is that you won't need to worry about running into it for at least a few more years. I can guarantee that you don't want to be walking around the forest and having this thing appear in front of you, but the good thing is that you don't need to worry about that until 2027. It's believed that this creature only appears in years that end with seven. During that year, it will be out and about in the forests of Michigan, hunting and preying on the victims that it finds. But whenever it isn't a year that ends in seven, it's in a deep slumber hidden somewhere in the state. If this thing was awake all the time, it very easily could be higher on this list because of how terrifying and deadly it can be. But because it's usually asleep, I'm not having it so high up. That being said though, still be careful if you're in a Michigan forest regardless of the year because I can only imagine that accidentally waking this thing up would probably be very bad for everybody involved. Number four on this list is the Amazonian giant centipede. Centipedes are gross guys. In fact, the only thing that might be grosser than a centipede is a millipede. The centipede that we're looking at today is a very real animal that isn't just gross, but it's flat out scary and dangerous. World Atlas says, the Peruvian giant yellow leg centipede, or the Amazonian giant centipede, is one of the largest centipede species in the world. The creature is about 30 centimeters long and preys on a large variety of animals. Interestingly, the centipede's diet is based not only on other invertebrates, but it can also overpower and kill creatures larger than it in size like lizards, snakes, frogs, mice, bats, and sparrow-sized birds. The centipede's primary weapons for killing prey are a pair of modified legs. 
The centipede uses these legs to penetrate the body of the victim and inject a highly toxic venom into their bloodstream. The killer creature can even climb the ceilings of caves where they can hold and manipulate their prey like bats with only a few legs attached to the ceiling. A four-year-old human child was reported to have been killed by the centipede venoms before. So not only can this scary arthropod kill people with its venom, but it's super difficult to fight. That's because it's extremely fast, guys. Having 100 legs means that you can move pretty quickly, and this thing definitely does. It can move up to 3 feet per second, which is really fast considering its size. Also, the nature of its body means that it can crawl into super small crevices that you might not see. The child who died from its venom actually happened to run into this thing in an empty soda can. The kid picked up the can not realizing what was inside, and then the centipede struck. Running into this thing in the forest, or honestly anywhere, would be really horrible. If you see an Amazonian giant centipede, then just walk the other direction. Number three on this list is the skinwalkers. Skinwalkers, as described by All That's Interesting, are animalistic humanoid creatures chronicled in the centuries-old folklore of various Native American tribes of the United States Southwest, most notably the Navajo, Pueblo, Apache, and Hopes people. It is one of many shape-shifting monsters from Native American legends. Skinwalkers are typically described with a beastly and deformed body, a marred, albeit humanoid face, and blazing orange-red eyes. But the origins of these creatures vary among tribal cultures. Some traditions say skinwalkers are powerful medicine men who succumb to the temptation of using their abilities for evil. Other traditions claim that the skinwalkers are the punitive form of any man, woman, or child who commits a deep sin. In any case, the myth of the skinwalkers is well known among indigenous communities. These Native American monsters are described as incredibly powerful and nearly immortal. They can only be killed with a bullet or knife dipped in white ash, a bit reminiscent of a shapeshifter from popular culture, the werewolf and its weakness to silver bullets. Shape-shifting animal human beasts who are extremely difficult to kill and super athletic. These things are very dangerous and not a species that you want to mess with. Typically residing in the forested areas of northern United States and Canada, they often travel in groups, which just kind of adds to how absolutely dead you are if you do happen across some. Be very careful of the skinwalkers if you're trekking through some North American forests. Number two on this list is an electric eel. So you won't be finding an electric eel in any northern forests like Canada, where I live, which is honestly pretty good for me. But if you live in the Amazon and happen to be going through an Amazon forest, then it's very likely this creature will be in the rivers right next to you. Definitely do not go for a dip in those rivers though, because the electric eel might be waiting for you. World Atlas says, a shocking danger lurks beneath the waters of Amazon River in Brazil. The electric eel is not a true eel, but actually a knife fish capable of delivering a massive electric shock to those who threaten it. Three pairs of abdominal organs of the fish allow it to generate electricity enough to stun an adult human being. The eels use their electricity generating capacity to stun prey before consuming them. Fatal attacks on humans are rare, but not completely non-existent. A single jolt could stun a human being enough to cause the person to stop breathing and drown even in shallow water. Multiple shocks could definitely trigger respiratory failure in humans. In the past, there are cases where the fish have delivered shocks strong enough to kill horses and even stun an adult caiman. If this fish can literally kill a horse, then we don't stand a chance, folks. There also literally isn't anything you can do about this thing other than just get out of the water. Like, it might be able to shock you without even touching you, so you might not even know that you're in danger. These things are also super gross looking and just not appealing as an animal at all. Super cool that they have electrical abilities, but not super cool if they use those abilities on me or you. And number one on this list is the Cherokee Horned Serpent. This is another Native American legend similar to the Skinwalkers, but this one is arguably far more dangerous. Another name for the Cherokee Horned Serpent is Euctina. The Euctina was, as you might imagine, a legend that originated from the Cherokee tribe in Western North Carolina. 
James Mooney, somebody who actually studied the Cherokee tribe, wrote about this beast in a book he published back in 1992. He wrote, Those who know say that the Yuktana is a great snake as large around as a tree trunk with horns on its head and a bright blazing crest with a diamond upon its forehead and scales glittering like sparks of fire. The blazing diamond is called Yolomsoti, transparent and he who can win it may become the greatest wonder worker of the tribe. Still, it is worth a man's life to attempt it, for whoever is seen by the Yuktana is so dazed by the bright light that he runs toward the snake instead of trying to escape. This diamond is so dazzling that it's going to draw you in and it's very problematic. You are going to lose if you fight this creature. It is just so strong and so powerful that unless you're literally an Avenger, you're just simply not going to stand a chance. It's said that these beasts are born out of envy and jealousy and come from the underworld. Massive serpents with incredible powers that literally come from hell. These things might just be lurking around the forests near you, hugging onto a tree and waiting for somebody to come and try to take the diamond in their forehead. There are rumors that one warrior was actually able to defeat these beasts at some point, but that is honestly just a rumor and never been confirmed. Be very, very careful if you're walking around a North American forest by yourself, and if you see a diamond, just run. Swinging in now at number two, Epping Forest, England. Of course, we've got to throw England somewhere in this mix, and there's nowhere more notorious than Epping Forest in Essex. Although the home of many alleged paranormal sightings, the real matter of fact is that Epping Forest is the grisly site of over 15 murders, perhaps more, and has notoriously been used as the hideout and retreat for murderers and criminals throughout British history. Throughout the Iron Age, the forest itself is thought to be the location for numerous Roman battles, and is is thought to be a candidate for the unknown final resting place of Boudicca, queen of the British Iceni tribe. Allegedly her ghost walks amongst the dense thicket at the deepest part of the wood. Epping Forest was also used as a hideout for the infamous highwayman Dick Turpin who had retreated into the forest following a string of robberies alongside the likes of other famous highwaymen such as Tom King and Sixteen String Jack. In more recent times though Epping Forest has seen a series of brutal and tragic murders. In the 1970s two children were found dead in a Cops near Lippitz Hill, which would eventually become known as the Babes in the Wood Murders, a tragic case that deeply affected the nation. Epping Forest is unparalleled in its violent and grisly significance, and it's a place where I definitely wouldn't like to take a stroll through later at night. And finally, our number one spot the Pine Barrens, New Jersey. Without a doubt, the most haunted and, well, just straight up weird place in America. There are so many folk legends surrounding the New Jersey Pine Barrens that it's hard to pinpoint exactly where to begin. But there is one tale that supersedes all others the legend of the Jersey Devil and the Pine Barrens' most notorious resident. Although its origins are unclear, the most widely held belief of the Jersey Devil begins with a Mrs. Leeds, a resident of Estelleville, a town which borders the Pinelands. When she found out that she was pregnant for the 13th time, in disgust, she cried out, let it be the devil. Well, when the baby arrived, that's exactly what it was, and it gave a screech, unfolded its wings, and flew out the window into the dense and desolate Pine Barrens. The creature has allegedly haunted the Pine Barrens for over 250 years, and locals, affectionately known as Pineys, consider its sightings to be too numerous to explain away as fiction. It doesn't end there, though, because the Pine Barrens harbour many more creepy tales than just the Jersey Devil. Captain Kidd, the headless ghost of a Scottish sailor, the ghostly visage of the Black Dog, the Golden Haired Girl, the ghost of James Still, the white stag, the blue hole. There is a hell of a lot of creepy stuff in New Jersey, and all of it pretty much happens in the Pine Barrens. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Let us know what you think. Number two on this list is the Yawata no Yabushiraza Forest. That is one heck of a mouthful, so from here on out, we're gonna call this forest YNY. YNY is located in Japan and is apparently one of the country's most haunted spots. That's a pretty big title to hold because Japan is full of haunted locations and scary sites. This forest is particularly bad though because entering it could mean the end of your life. There is an extensive history with this forest and people disappearing. For some reason, when people go into this forest, they don't often come out. It's thought that their souls get spirited away to a faraway land. Now let's think about this for a second. Why or how could something like this be happening? Well, maybe the devil is chilling out in these woods and those souls are actually getting spirited straight down to hell. 
No one's been able to think of a logical explanation behind the disappearances, but the devil seems to make the most sense to me. This is a deep and lush forest, perfect for hiding, and whenever anyone comes in here, the devil just takes him away. I hope it's not true, but it very well could be. Number four on this list is the Epping Forest. Located in England, this forest has been a hot spot for criminals and all things evil for basically ever. CN Traveler says the size and density of Epping Forest have made it a popular hideout for criminals and an infamous burial spot for bodies. Notorious highwayman Dick Turpin hid there in the early 1700s, and more than a dozen murder victims have been discovered in the woods since the 1960s. Now, it's no surprise then that this forest has developed a reputation for spooky sounds and ghostly apparitions. Some people also claim that if you drive to Hangman's Hill and park in neutral, your car will slowly be pulled uphill. Even if you don't believe in the myths, just the appearance of the woods is likely to send a chill up your spine. The pollarded trees haven't been cut since the late 1800s, giving them an unusually overgrown and bulbous look. So I looked into Dick Turpin, guys, and this dude was rotten to the core. A real highwayman who just robbed and murdered his way through life. Any forest that's about to attract a dude like this certainly has my attention. All the death, all the criminal activity, and then the fact that we're getting ghostly apparitions, all of these things lead me to thinking that this could be a decent hiding spot for the devil. Also, what the heck is that hill thing about? If you park your car in neutral, it just rolls up a hill? Like that literally defies all the laws of physics that we know of. At the very least, something paranormal is going on here, that much is clear. I think there's a good chance though that whatever paranormal thing is happening here could have a tie with the devil. Number three on this list is the Smolensky Forest. This is a forest in Russia that is just riddled with tragedy. Reader's Digest says, in 1943, at the height of World War II, German troops invaded the Smolensk forest and discovered a mass grave containing thousands upon thousands of dead Polish soldiers. Ultimately, it was determined they'd been massacred on Joseph Stalin's orders. If the presence of 20,000 lost souls wasn't enough to frighten people away, then the tragic plane crash that took place in 2010, which killed 96 Polish political military, and business leaders hammered the nail into the coffin, so to speak. Horrible, guys. Just a horrible place that has seen some horrible things. I don't think that anybody would be shocked if the devil popped up here and just appeared to be hiding out in this Russian forest the whole time. Obviously, to any regular human being, that wouldn't be a place that you'd want to go, but I imagine the devil probably be loving it. Number two on this list is the Daring Woods. Another English forest here, and another one that features a highwayman. CN Traveler says, The Daring Woods are commonly referred to as the Screaming Woods, or, you know, a perfect place to host your next family camping trip. Visitors report hearing blood-curdling screams coming from the forest depths at night, as well as footsteps and whispers on foggy days. The screams are often attributed to a highwayman who was captured and killed by villagers in the 18th century, and whose ghost apparently still holds quite the grudge. Others believe the hauntings are the result of a 1948 massacre where 20 people were supposedly found dead in the forest the morning of November 1st. Residents reported seeing strange lights emanating from the woods that Halloween night and autopsies of the bodies couldn't determine a cause of death. 20 people dead in one place in a horrible massacre. The devil might not still be here, but we can say for sure that he was during that horrible tragedy. It's also very possible that a forest like this, one that has had such a bad tragedy, would attract the devil. Apparently it's super foggy here all the time as well, which is probably just another good reason to want to hide here. Daring Woods in England is one that should definitely be avoided, I think, guys. Number two on this list is Angelina National Forest. What once was a thriving area with great potential has turned into a ghost-filled zone with the paranormal. CN Traveler says, back in the early 1900s, Angelina National Forest was home to a thriving sawmill town of over 1,000 people. The mill was sadly a beacon for disaster, getting hit by a hurricane in 1911 and then by a fire in 1914. Residents soon abandoned the area, leaving behind a tiny ghost town. The abandoned site is eerie in and of itself, as ghost towns are. But rumors of the paranormal up that creepiness factor a few notches. Hikers have claimed to hear the disembodied screams of a young woman, a former resident of the town who was killed in a freak accident while visiting her boyfriend at the sawmill. A few people have even spotted her ghost wandering around the dilapidated mill. Something about abandoned sawmills is just 
uber creepy, folks. Especially when we have the ghost of a girl who was killed walking around it. This forest had potential. The whole area had potential. That potential was never realized though, and now it's a shell of what it could have been. Unless somebody goes in here and rids the area of the spirits that haunt it, this place will always be a sad reminder of the past. Just for the record though, I'm not going to be the person who does the paranormal cleansing. And finally, number one on this list is Freetown Fall River State Forest. This forest might not only be haunted by stuff of this planet, but could be haunted by creatures from other planets as well. CN Traveler says, The Freetown State Forest sits smack dab in the Bridgewater Triangle, an area in southeastern Massachusetts swarming with paranormal activity, roaming specters, UFO encounters, and even Bigfoot sightings. Some believe that the forest's haunted history dates back to colonial times when settlers purchased the land, sacred burial grounds included, from the Wempanoag tribe. The transaction is said to have cursed the area, which has since been the site of satanic cult rituals and murders in the 1970s and 80s, as well as comparatively innocuous poltergeist and fireball sightings more recently. We literally have everything here, guys. Werewolves, satanic cults, murders, sacrifices, ancient burial grounds, and to top it all off, we got UFO sightings. This place is messed up. Sometimes there's just an area that for whatever reason attracts the evil and paranormal entities of the world. I'm pretty sure that's what we have here. And that's why I'm not going in by myself anytime soon. Number 5 on this list is the Wampus Cat. A name that sounds kind of silly and cute, but really isn't reflective of how dangerous this creature can truly be. How Stuff Works says, It smells awful, like skunk spray and wet dog. It has glowing yellow eyes and fangs. It kills animals, kidnaps kids, and terrifies all it meets. Creepiest of all, it's half cat, half woman. This terrifying creature is the Wampus cat. Generally on the prowl in northeastern Tennessee, the creature has also been spotted in eastern Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia, and intriguingly at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. The origin story of this kitty is still up in the air, but apparently there are two popular ones. One says a Cherokee wife hid beneath the skin of a mountain lion to spy on her husband and his buddies while they were hunting. They discovered her and as punishment, the tribe's medicine men said she had to wear the lion skin forevermore, turning her into into a cat woman. Anguished, she roams around bemoaning her fate. Another tale says a Cherokee warrior went on the hunt for a beast that was terrorizing his tribe. When he tracked it down, it looked him straight in the eye, causing the warrior to go insane. The warrior's wife wasn't happy about this, so she hid under the skin of a mountain lion and stalked the beast to exact revenge. When she found it, the beast took one look at her and fled, petrified. Cross your fingers that you don't ever run into this creature, because it may be the last thing that you ever do. Number four on this list is a poison dart frog. This animal is not something from legend. It's not a scary story that somebody told you by a campfire one evening that got exaggerated throughout the years. It is a very real, very dangerous animal that can be found in the Amazon rainforests. Poison dart frogs are incredibly poisonous. So poisonous, in fact, that it's believed the venom contained in one single tiny frog is enough to kill 10 adult human beings. It's really too bad that we can't get close to these creatures because they are truly stunning. Their bright colors are some of the most beautiful in the entire world, and the patterns on their back are marvelous to look at. In fact, these patterns resemble small darts, and this is one of the reasons why they got their name, poison dart frogs. The other reason why they got their name is because Native Americans used to take the poison from these animals and put it onto the tip of darts that they would then use to poison their enemies. If you were to get hit with one of these darts, you would die quickly, and the same rule applies to the frogs. The tiny creatures are only one and a half to six centimeters big, which is actually a little bit scarier to me. The thing is that these little guys aren't aggressive in nature. If you're walking and spot one on the path, then you can simply just avoid it and it shouldn't attack you. However, because they are so tiny, it's very easy to accidentally touch one as you trek through the forest. Unlike scorpions or snakes where they need to break the skin, a poison dart frog's toxin just seeps into your skin and therefore simply touch it is enough to kill 
you. You may not even know that you've encountered one because if you do touch it, then you'll be dead in three minutes or less. If you are going to the Amazon, make sure you take a guide who knows what they're doing and maybe wear some gloves to be extra careful of the poison dart frog. Number three on this list is the hide behind. The hide behind is a famous cryptid in American folklore that's been talked about for many years. It's a very deadly creature that if encountered could very easily take your life. Cryptid Wiki says, the hide behind is a mysterious nocturnal creature from American folklore. It's said to prey upon humans that wander the woods at night and was credited for the disappearances of early colonial loggers when they failed to return to camp. Early accounts describe hide behinds as large, powerful animals, despite the fact that no one was able to see them. As its name suggests, the hide behind is noted for its ability to conceal itself. When an observer attempts to look directly at it, the creature hides again behind an object or the observer and therefore can't be seen directly. The hide behind uses this ability to stalk human prey without being observed and to attack without warning. Once the person is killed, the hide behind drags the person back to their lair to be eaten. Ever since people have been chopping down trees, this creature has been spoken about as being a menace. It is fast and very predatory and considering you won't be able to really see it at all if it is stalking you, then having one decide that you're a tasty meal is pretty much a death sentence. That is, unless you happen to be in possession of some alcohol. Beer, wine, whiskey, other hard liquors. If you're a lumberjack who is alone in the woods, then bring some with you. Now this isn't so that you can get blasted in the forest by yourself, although I'm sure that that would be great fun in its own right. Having some alcohol on your person is actually a defense mechanism. If you feel that one of these creatures is stalking you, then drink the booze that you have. You may even want to take some of it and rub it on your body. This is because it's currently believed that the hide behind hates the smell of alcohol and won't consume anyone or anything that's had it or smells like it. To date, this is our only known way of saving yourself from being prey to this dangerous woodland creature. Number two on this list is a Brazilian wandering spider. Similar to our dart frog, this is assuredly a very real animal that scientists have studied extensively. As you can imagine, they are mainly native to Brazil and are extremely dangerous. World Atlas writes, the Brazilian wandering spider is the most venomous arachnid in the world. Even the scientific name of the spider, Phonutria, means murderous in Greek. The spiders are called wandering spiders as during the night they prefer to crawl on the floor of the jungle looking for prey instead of building webs and staying in them. During the day, the spiders hide in various places including the banana plants. The spiders might also wander into human settlements where they might remain hidden in houses and cars. If disturbed by humans, they may bite. The small size of these spiders makes them even more difficult to detect. Until 1996 when an antidote had been found, 14 people were reported to have died from the bites of the wandering spider. The venom of the spider causes extreme pain and inflammation as well as loss of muscle control which might lead to respiratory paralysis and death. What has this animal higher on the list than the poison dart frog is the fact that it's very aggressive. The dart frog won't leap out at you and try to poison you. It may happen by accident, but it shouldn't want to harm you. This creature does just the opposite though and it will go for the kill. It's also small enough that you might not notice it, but big enough that if it sees you and starts running towards you, then you might not have time to do anything to stop it. A terrifying animal that you really don't want to come face to face with. And finally, number one on this list is the Wendigo. I feel like everybody watching this video knew that this one would be coming and that just speaks to the level of lore that surrounds this ancient creature. Cryptid Wiki says, the Wendigo is a cannibalistic spirit resembling a zombie. In some forms, the Wendigo is the size of a human, while in others it can be 15 feet tall. The earliest description of the Wendigo was that of a similar appearance to a corpse with a skeleton-like thin body with gray skin, sunken eyes, bloody lips, yellow fangs, and a long slimy tongue. Later myths say that the Wendigo is a lipless ape with giant fangs that devours human flesh. It can turn a person into a Wendigo, which was one of the worst curses to the Algonquin-speaking Native Americans of Canada. These beasts are highly dangerous, and encountering one is horribly unlucky. I was looking for some potential ways to fight back against these things, and happened to find an expert list a few on Quora. They say the first is fire. Not just a torch or a bonfire, it needs to be completely engulfed in fire for a prolonged period. Long enough to breach the outer Wendigo and reach the human inside. The second requires getting even closer to the murderous 
murderous beast and somehow stabbing it with something long and sharp directly where the heart should be. Once again, that is where the frozen human is supposedly dormant. Frankly, both of these options are highly dangerous and even if you did hold up a flame, there's no saying for sure the Wendigo won't simply overpower you as you're doing it. However, these are your best shots at staying alive. Hopefully you never have to do this though and can avoid an encounter altogether. <laughs>